Josh, would it be easier for the Coalition if you just released your costings now? We'll release our costings in good time, Lyndall. Uh, and as you know, the government's track record in this area is pretty poor. Uh, so people in glass houses shouldn't be throwing stones. They released their costings just the evening uh, before the election, uh, both in 2007 and in 2010. So we'll release them in good time. And when it comes to the paid parental leave scheme, that has been fully costed. Uh, by the uh, Parliamentary Budget Office and it will be fully funded. Now, lots of Coalition uh, MPs and Senators, Matthias Cormann said it earlier, you said it now, say in good time. Do you know exactly what, what that period of time is? I don't know the date. Uh, that's a question for Tony Abbott, Joe Hockey and Andrew Robb and Matthias Cormann to consider. But, uh, you know, they'll be uh, putting together all those uh, final details and it will be released uh, with plenty of time for people to scrutinise it. Uh, Lee, you, the Greens had, you had your uh, paid parental leave scheme costed twice by the Parliamentary Budget Office, once before the election started and once during the election period. Was, was that second costing intended to stimulate a debate over the details of the coalition scheme? Oh, well, there was things that we needed to check. But just going back to the um, possibility of a coalition paid parental leave, there's certainly a question mark over it, considering they won't release the costings. We don't have a start update. And there is real form here. When a Conservative government comes in, they suddenly discover that convenient black hole and all of a sudden promises that they said were locked in. Then they say, well, we can't commit to and we can't afford any more. So I think there is a real worry here. But the Greens will continue to advocate for a paid parental leave scheme uh, and wh who, whatever party comes in, we are certainly ready to work with them because Australian women and their partners deserve it. In fact, uh, Nick Xenophon has said if the Coalition comes in, he wouldn't be voting for the paid parental leave scheme. In fact, the Greens scheme is pretty close to the Coalition scheme, isn't there? There would be room for negotiation to get it past the Senate. Oh, there's room for ne negotiations, but ours is costed and it is achievable. Uh, remember, ours only goes up to 100000 in terms of the income that's available. It's across six months. It includes superannuation, uh, the two weeks for the other parent, which, which is obviously often the dad. And so it's a real achievable package. We've had it costed at $2.1 billion, plus that 1.5% uh, levy on businesses for their um, taxable income over $5 million. So it's ready to go and that's what we would be negotiating around. Josh, are you confident that if the Coalition wins government with the Green scheme pretty close to yours that you would be able to get it through the Parliament? Oh, we're very confident that if we win government we'll be able to implement all our policies, not just the paid parental leave scheme. I just want to say, Lyndall, that it is an important uh, policy that Tony Abbott's put forth in this regard. I mean, it's a productivity measure. It's about building uh, female workforce participation. And there will be a big dividend for the Australian economy when that comes about. And for a, uh, an Australian woman who's on full-time average earnings of about you know, $65,000, they'll be $21,300 better off under our scheme. What is more, it will be for 26 weeks, not 18 weeks as the government scheme. And the World Health Organization said a mother needs about half a year to bond with their child. And it will be at replacement wage, not at minimum wage, which is the government's program. And we know that only two out of the more than 30 OECD countries have a paid parental leave scheme. Um, which is not a uh, replacement wage. So this will put us on par with the rest of the world. Plus we'll include superannuation and plus we'll remove the burden from small business we by might... administering it through the Family Assistance Office. So it's a very good proposal. It will make a real difference to the broader economy and we hope to implement it when we get to government. We might move on now to asylum policy and today family groups have been sent to Nauru for the first time since the government's asylum seeker settlement deal with the island nation. 14 adults and 12 children arrived on Nauru this morning. So is the government's policy working? The Immigration Minister concedes there have been a spike in boat arrivals in recent days, but he says before that the numbers were falling and there's evidence many are reconsidering their options. We had people who are now registering with the U United Nations, with the UNHCR, who weren't planning to. We had people returning directly home who weren't planning to. We have people demanding their money back from people smugglers who certainly weren't planning to. And we have people smugglers now desperate to try to overwhelm the system 
offering cut price rates and doing everything they can to try to get the last few boats off. They never see the holes and failings in their own policies and then it all falls apart later and they just shake their heads and the boats come even faster with more people on it. This thing mutates like a virus. Lee, while you don't like the government's policy, do you accept Tony Burke's word that, that it is working to deter some people from, from making the journey to Australia? Oh, not at all. We've seen the boats and the numbers go up and down and I think there's been so much evidence to show that when um, people are in a terrible situation in their country, what they're considering is how they save their children's lives, how they save their own lives and that they, if, therefore that they may have to leave the country and then they deal with the trip as it unfolds and this gain goes back to Australia's clear responsibility to honour its international obligations. Um, the Greens are calling for more money to be put into Indonesia to assist them to process uh, refugees there. And we could save so much money. It's costing us over $7 billion to run these offshore detention centres. Looks like the costs will blow out. Uh, for a, a fraction of that, we could be managing refugees, having the safe pathways, saving lives and ensuring that people are assessed properly and settled in Australia if that's what the decision is. Josh, does the fact that there has still been some boats arriving show that however harsh you might intend your policies to be, it's going to take a lot of effort, isn't it, to stop people making that journey? Well, we've said that the government's uh, PNG so-called solution will not be the answer. You need a, a range of domestic-based measures and that's why we've put them forward in addition to offshore processing, namely temporary protection visas and turning back the boats when it's safe to do so. But let's put some facts on the table, Lindor. First, uh, there has been nearly 3,000 unauthorised boat arrivals since Kevin Rudd announced the so-called PNG solution. And Manus only has a capacity for a few hundred, so that's clearly not working. Second, Peter O'Neill, the Prime Minister of Papua New Guinea, has directly contradicted Kevin Rudd by saying that people, even if they're deemed to be refugees, will not necessarily, necessarily be settled in Papua New Guinea. They could indeed be settled back in Australia. And three, there is this international forum taking place at the moment where Australia is represented and Indonesia, but no representation from Iran. Now, the greatest number of people coming to Australia by boat uh, in, in recent times are coming from Iran, and Iran's not even participating in this international forum. So the government's proposal is really unravelling before the Australian people's eyes. Um, the government has no idea how to solve this problem. The Greens have no idea how to solve this problem. We did it when we were in government, and we'll have to do it again if we get another chance after September the 7th. Uh, Josh has been misleading there. Uh, when you go back to the, what Mr Howard did with Nauru, it's actually very similar to what we're now hearing from the Labor government about PNG, where they're saying that none of these people will ever come to Australia. Well, well, and as Lee. Josh knows, the majority of those people who were taken to Nauru ended up in Australia. Lee, and I, this I know is you about not, politics. Lee, it's uh, not Lee, about people. Lee, uh, Lee, Josh, I, I, know you might not, I, might, I know you might not know the, uh, like the facts, but... One decade ago, in 2003, there was only one boat with 53 people. We're just eight months into this year. There have been more than 19,000 people on more than 260 boats. If that's the reality. That's the comparison between John Howard's record and that's the comparison with Kevin Rudd and Julia If Gillard's I could record. ask you both this final question, first to you, Lee, and then Josh, would the Indonesian... Does the Indonesian government's decision on uh, uh, visas, not accepting uh, uh, visas from people who come from Iran, has that got the potential to make the biggest difference? Well, certainly that needs to be dealt with, but we do need to go back to Josh's point. I, yes, there was a difference in the number of boats, but you're not taking into account there what was happening in those countries, Afghanistan, and Sri Lanka, Iran, and that's all very relevant to that statement you continue to give that is highly misleading. And Josh, uh, uh, the question to you on, on Indonesia's decision on Iranians? Well, that's a positive decision and we welcome it, but again, it's not you know, alone enough to stop the... Uh, 
the tide of unauthorised boat arrivals. There's been a, a civil war in Sri Lanka for many years. Uh, you've had the situation in Iraq. You've had the situation in Afghanistan for many years. There were those same push factors during the Howard years, but there just weren't the pull factors that now exist under the Labor government. And that's why we'll have to leave it. Josh Frydenberg and Lee Rhiannon, thank you very much for your time. Thanks very Thank much, you. Lindor. Thanks, Josh. Thanks, Lee. Thanks, Lindor. And that's Capitol Hill for now. Here's Matt Cargill with NXP.